today we are in our fourth part. Today I'm talking about give us our daily bread. So we know that when Jesus, uh, um, when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus told them, pray, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We say when you start prayer, always start with worship. Always start by proclaiming who God is for you. Then the second thing, uh, you know, Jesus, no, no. The first thing was to understand, to know that God is your father. Jesus said, God is not some invisible power. God is your father. And as you come in the presence of God, consider him as a father. It changes the dynamics of the relationship you have with God. So when we pray, it's not about, that's why we keep saying that when you come in the presence of God, it's not you fulfilling some rituals. It's you coming into a relationship. A father with a daughter, a son with a, uh, a father with a son. Then the second thing is you need to proclaim the, uh, the goodness of God, the wonders of God. Then last week, um, I, I, I said, you know the, the, you know, the third part, which was, your will be done. Your kingdom come and your will be done. And today, on verse 3 of Luke chapter 11, Jesus tells us to pray to God, give us day by day our daily bread. So in this prayer for daily bread, we need to understand that bread stands for more than just food. Bread stands for all the results we get from eating food. It stands for all the physical things we need for life. So you've come to God, you praise God, you've honored God, you've adored God. Jesus said, now it's time for you to come in the presence of God and ask him for bread. Ask him for something, some physical need. So when you have a physical need, when you've got some practical need, you need to come in the presence of God and pray and ask him. We do have a various needs. We do have different needs. We do have physical need. We don't have need for shelter. We, need, we, need, we have need for food, for clothing. We don't have emotional need. We don't, we don't have need for stability. As, you know, we have need for confidence. We have need for self-esteem. We don't have spiritual need. We don't have all this need that we need God to satisfy. What God is telling you or what Jesus is telling you is that those needs that we, we see to be physical, in fact, God can meet your need. God has the power to meet every need in this place. God has the power to meet all our needs. Physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever that need is, we need to pray to God for provision. For provision. So the first thing I want to talk to you is we need absolute dependence on God for everything. Absolute dependence on God for everything. You know, I remember that when I was growing up, every time before we eat, we would pray. We would pray, we would give God thanks for the food, then we would eat. I don't think that people who grow up in a country where, where we throw tons of, uh, of, of, of food in, in the beans, they really understand what I'm talking about. Because some of us have grown up in an environment where food was available. Food was there. And uh, I, I remember we would wake up in the morning and look for something that was left. Or the leftover that was left the night before. But today uh, you give to your children the leftovers. They don't, they don't eat it. You know we have food in our house that we throw almost every single day. We, we, throw, we throw apples, we, we throw our fruit, bananas, we cook food. And even this morning, a chili con carne had, you know, went into the bin. Because it wouldn't be eaten, you know, everything. When I was growing up, you don't see that. You just don't see that. You can't throw anything. You keep everything. Even when it was... It was, it was Close to expire, not even close, it was actually expired. You know, you can smell it. You know, you smell, you smell that food, it's expired. But who cares? Who cares? You just eat it. Because you just want to fill your stomach. Because you don't know the next one when it's going to come. So we, but when you had food on the table, 
My goodness. And I remember one day when uh, we were about to pray and my father had to pray. And he started, dear Lord, in the beginning was the word. And the word was made flesh. And you created everything. You created the fruit and you created the bird. You created even this meat that we're about to eat. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Then, oh, Father God, in the desert, in the wilderness, Lord, you took your people in the, in the wilderness. They had no food, but Lord, you supplied manna in the, in the desert. Then it was like, Father, I'm so hungry, Dad. I want to eat. And he was just carrying on. He praised God for the manna in the desert. Then he said, Lord, here we are in the desert. Here we are in the wilderness. Thank you for providing that manna. Thank you for providing that food. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he came. <laughs> say, you are in Jesus Christ now. Come on, can you just pray so that we can eat food? But the point was, he was so thankful. He was so grateful to God that he would not put that food into his mouth before he began to praise God. Because he understood that every bread, every need, God had to supply. But we do not have that concept here. In our, in, in, in our culture, in our, in our environment. Why? Because what we think is, who? God? No, it's not God. I worked hard for it. But the Bible says, who gives you the strength to work? It's God. Who gives you life to work? It's God. The Bible says, he gives you the ability to produce. So if you have been able to produce food, to put uh, uh, food on the table, God has given you that ability. So you've got to come and praise God and thank God. You have to depend on God for that food. And the other problem we do have in this country, and I, wanna, I really want to say, I, this is a political thing, right? I'm not political when I'm preaching, and I try not to. When we, 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 we live in this country, compared to America, for instance, where there's no kind of benefit, if you see what I mean. Welfare system different in America than here, right? Here, if you're struggling to pay for your house and all that, you get housing benefit. Uh, if you don't work, you got, get job seekers allowance, you get universal credit, you get all these things. So you can actually go to bed and sleep, not even pray, not relying on God, knowing that the government will supply. So the be government become a provider. And I remember there was a, a Thatcher, who say that we have got to the culture in this country where we feel like the government has to come in for everything. But who's the government? The government is you. The people is you. If you don't work, if you don't bring in the money, if you don't pay taxes, there's nowhere we can find the money to supply for that food. But the problem is people have grown up into the culture of not depending on God, but depending on the government to supply to their need. And they've given up on God. And I said that the problem we do have in this country, when you say that religion is going low and low and low, is because the government has made this country to rely on him rather than on God. And go to any country in the world where people don't rely on any benefit. You will see how people pray. You will see how people go to God and see God and, 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 and pray because they depend absolutely on God for everything. If you don't depend on God for everything, then what's the point for you? And now the problem that we do have, because we depend on the government, the government cannot give us our daily bread. Because is there anybody here who can say that he's been receiving benefit that has made him rich? Anybody? Anybody can say that what I've been receiving from the government is enough. I don't need anything else. No. In fact, every money that we receive is going straight back. As soon as you get it, you pay the bills. As soon as you get it, you go out and pay this and pay that, and the money, gone. What is left in the pocket? Nothing. So we have the, a false sense of security. We have a false sense of security where we believe that I don't need to pray to God to get my bread because I can still buy the bread. But the reality is that you still need God to supply to your need. Because if God does not supply to your need, you will be poor. If God has no supply to your need, you will still be hungry. It means that you may have your bread, 
but you're still going to be complaining. I can tell you I have not seen people complaining like here. And we complain about everything. We complain about the weather. Even right now, it's too hot. Too hot. I came in a country where it was almost 38 degrees. Almost every single day. 38. And you know how people come to church? Dressed in suits and ties. <laughs> suit and ties. Right? And when you remove that suit, when you remove that top, he is wet because he's sweating. But they come, they worship God in the heat, in the sun. They worship God. No complaint. But people are laying on the floor and, and just worshiping God. But here, as soon as it's hot, it's too hot. It's too hot. Church, what's the point? I'm going to the beach. If you go right now in the beach, even the hole, just go in the hole, you will see how many people are, are, right, are, are there. The church is not a place to be in, the, in, the, in, the, in this hot weather. The beach is. This is... This is the people that we have become. Complainers. Complainers. Even when we get 72 pounds from the, from the government for free, we see complaining. It should have been 120. 120. That 120 will do. 120 will do. Not 72. They're not giving us enough. They've got to give us enough. They have to increase. They have to increase the money that they give. We complain and we complain. And the reason is because we did not understand that only God can satisfy. Only God can satisfy. No matter the amount of money that you may receive. If, if you don't rely on God. If you don't depend on God. You will still be left hungry and thirsty. Because he is the bread of life. Jesus said, a man shall not live on bread alone. You can't just live by going to Tesco, by going to Sainsbury's. No, the Bible says, God, man shall not live on bread alone. You do not just need this bread that you need. You need God. You got to depend on God for everything. For everything. I need to depend on God for me to go to work. I need to depend on God for me to get something to eat. When I get that something to eat, I sit down on the table. Then I say, should we give glory to God for getting this food? I need to depend on God. I need to depend on God to pay my bills. I need to depend on God. And when you depend on God to pay your bills, that is your point. That is where you go to cry. That's where you go complain. Go complain before God. But don't look at the government because the government cannot do everything for you. The government give us, you know, gives us a false sense of security. A false, you know, who knew that a small, a tiny virus like COVID can paralyze the whole country? Who knew? You know, we live in a country where we've got scientists, we've got hospitals, we've got all these things. But that virus just came. It destabilized everything. It destabilized everything. It shows you that there is no security apart from God. There is no safety apart from God. You cannot rely and say, look, our government will protect us. And sometimes I look at the whole situation in the whole world. I say, even Putin... He thought that he had the greatest army, right? He thought that he can go to Ukraine and beat them. You know what happened? They're still there, cornered. Because that is the full sense of security. The Bible says, all to you, all to you, if you are relying on your own strength. All to you, if you are relying on your own ability. All to you, or curse is you. If you are not relying on God, but you are relying on your own ability, you are cursed at what the Bible says. You got to rely on God. Give us our daily bread is a, a total and absolute dependence on God for everything. For my water, I have to rely on God. For my food, I need to rely on God. For my job, I have to rely on God. For my provision, I have to rely on God. Not my job. Not my job. Do you know how many people give up on God because of a job? A job cannot provide to your need. Can I say it again? 
Yes, sometimes we look at ourselves and say, oh, if only I get a job and all that. What I want to tell you is that that job is God who provide for you. God provided for you. And it's God who will make sure that you eat the fruit of the land. Basically what it means is, you may go and work so hard. After the whole year, you look at your bank account, or you look at the bank statement, or you look at that P P60 when it comes through. You realize that you have made 60,000 grand a year. But you ask yourself your question, where has it gone? You look at around the house, the TV is broken. Sofas, insects, they've eaten them. Your bed is making noise all the time. You wanted to change that bed for a long time. It's still not changed. That mattress is like skeleton. It's really, it's, 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 it's shrunk. You're crying out to God and say, Lord, I want you to provide. The problem with you never understood that not the amount of money. God. Put God first. Put God first and he will supply to all your need. The Bible says, I am a God who will supply to all your need. He's not telling you to be lazy. What he's telling you is, as you work, God will give you far more than what you need. God will give you far more than what you need. And he will make sure that he stand against your enemies. The Bible says, he will stand against the devourers. So there is something that will be coming to devour your money, to devour you. God will be standing. God will be protecting. God will be fighting. Which means that when you've got 100 pounds, that 100 pounds will feel like 1,000 pounds. Because it does not come with sorrow. But when you get 1,000 pounds in your bank account, but with a lot of sorrows, that's the, as soon as you get it, that's when you get messages. That's when you get a call from your, 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 your auntie, for your uncles. That's where you get something. That's where your car breaks down. It's all perfect. 1,000 pounds in a bank account. Oh, now I can book a holiday. You booked that holiday. The car is broken down. And you can't fix it. That 1,000 half pound has to come back. You want a refund, but they say you can't refund it. Then you, well, all you have to do is credit card. Or loan. Then you become, you, you get into debt. But you say, but where is that money it's all going? Because we have to go back and realize where we are standing with God. Are we depending on God for everything? Are we depending on God for everything? Ask yourself the question. And this is where the matter of even giving to God. And giving what is due to God comes in. Where you realize that if it's coming from God. Then I'm giving it to God. Then I'm going to honor God with what God is giving me. How much of what you're getting honors God. The first thought that comes into our mind as soon as we are blessed with 2,000 pounds, can I book a holiday? Greece is waiting for me. Turkey is waiting for me. Ibiza is waiting for me. And this is what I want to go. All oh, this money, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it for anything on the word. But the church does not have microphone. The church does not have drums. The church does, does have need. When is it you're going to realize, Lord, you have given me this, but I want to bless you. In what you have given me, Lord, can I bless you? This is where we begin to depend on God. To pray this prayer for our daily bread, we are expressing our conviction and belief that God is able to answer our prayer and to meet our need. Not our jobs, not our, our, our bosses. No one has the, the ability to meet our need. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bones, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Look at what Jesus is saying. A child of God depends on God. He's not worried about anything else. He's not worried about, where am I going to get the next bill, uh, you know, the next money to pay my bill? Where am I going to get this? You're not worrying about this because Jesus, uh, Jesus said, your father knows about all these things. 
He, you know, he continues. Verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. I'm trying to see if uh, I'm still lining up with the text there on the screen. Yeah, verse 31. Um, 31. Yeah, you of little faith. So verse 31. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Then the last bit. But for the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all the things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow we worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The point that Jesus is trying to make here. Is that when you depend on God for everything that you do. When you depend on God for provision. Then you don't worry. You don't worry. You don't panic. You don't worry about what you're going to eat, where the money will come from, where things, how things will happen. You focus, your focus is God. Your focus is God. As long as you are close to God, things will turn out to be okay. Things will turn out to be good. And he says this, some of us, we worry about what we're going to eat tomorrow. Next week. There are even people who are worrying about next year. Five years time. You may be worrying about your children. I've heard a parent saying, oh, pastor, I'm worrying so much about my children. This word is going crazy. Then I say, so are you worrying about your, the future of your children because this word is going crazy? You're not, rely, you're not trusting God? Suppose that my dad was so worried in, in, in the 70s when I was born. I don't know in which world child will be growing up. There was no internet at the time. There was no Facebook. There was no Twitter. There was no all these things. So uh, I suppose that he was worrying. What's the point of worrying? Because God is going to take care of Charlie. God will take care of your children. God will provide for your children. And sometimes you worry, what am I going to leave to my children? You know that sometimes we worry about why we're going to leave for our children. Why we're going to leave? But because you're thinking about the house, you know, uh, you think about material stuff. But none of these things, they are worth your worry. Because God will supply to their needs. God will supply to your need. The Bible says, do not worry about things that are ahead. In five years, in one year, or, or, or tomorrow, you, you focus on the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, God will give you all these things. He will give you all these things and you will glorify God. My second point about the daily bread is that that dependence on God has to be daily. Should I say it again? That dependence on God has to be daily. God desires daily dependence on him. On him. When God provided manna in the wilderness for the Israelites, they were commanded to gather only enough for each day. They were, they were not asked to keep anything. So in other words, God wants you to depend on him every single day. Let me show you something here in the scripture when he talks about manna. The Bible says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an armor for each person you have in your tent. Verse 19. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning. But it was full of maggot and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. 
So when God provided manna for God's people, he told them, you need to rely on me on a daily basis. Every day I will supply to your need. I will provide manna. But don't keep until tomorrow. And the Bible says, some Israelites, they, they did not care about this command. What they did, they said, ooh, look at manna. I'm keeping all this for myself until tomorrow. And they kept, what happened? The next morning, it was full of maggot. Because God says, I cannot give you enough grace for tomorrow. I'm giving you enough grace for today. If you try to keep it until tomorrow, it will be full of maggot. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Listen, what it means that sometimes I stand here, I preach, God has given me the strength, and next week, if I come here and I say, oh, I felt the power, I felt the anointing last week, it's still going to be there. You stand here, nothing will happen because you will be full of maggot. I've got to go to God again and say, Lord, I need your grace today. You need to go to God for every single day, every single day, and depend on God on a daily basis. He's never going to give you enough strength for tomorrow. He will give you enough strength for today. Leave tomorrow alone. The problem is most of the time, we want to, you know, because we have grown up with saving, 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 you know, keep some. Spend a little and keep some. When it comes to finances, it's okay. But when it comes to the things of God, you've got to rely on God on a daily basis. It was great what God did with you last week. But today is another day. It was great what God did, for, God did through you last year. But today is another day. You've got to come to God on a daily basis and rely on him. This is the, the, the point I'm trying to make. Yesterday's strength is absolutely useless to fight today's battles. Yesterday's strength is absolutely useless to fight today's battles. If you think like you can win that battle that you are fighting right now with your experience, you will be surprised. Because the enemy will come with a different tactic. You say, oh, I won that battle yesterday. I can win it today. But the enemy has developed a different strategy that you can't understand. Because God alone knows the strategy. The Bible says that if you rely on God, God will give you the strength for that day. So don't ever use experience with God. Don't ever use experience. The experience were, are, are sometimes good. They teach us lessons, but we can't rely on them. All is preach. You know, how many people here will know that even though I preach every single Sunday, but every time I come here, I always shake inside of me. Holy shake. And sometimes I go, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Because I want that anxiety or that stress to go. Because you cannot rely on the fact that you do it week in, week out. Every single day is, is different. Hallelujah. And most of the battles we lose in life is because we have forgotten this principle. We have forgotten. Even in a relationship, you know, a relationship is in a danger when people start living in the past. I used to do this for you. I used to do that for you. And I... Uh, People have to forget about that and consider that every single day is a new day. We have not experienced anything. Let go again. But it goes also to say that there are people who will keep a grudge for days, for years. They will keep, that, they will keep talking about it over and over and over again. It is a new day. And if it is a new day, let us move on. Let us move on. You know, sometimes if you had an issue with somebody, it, it happened yesterday, and when you wake up in the morning, when that person wants to restart that conversation, you say, no, 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 that was yesterday. That's it. That's finished. Can we just move on? But there are people who will dwell on it. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about it? You talked about it, and the next day, you know that I still had a word. I did not finish. And then the next, the next, the next day, I've forgiven you, but can we still talk about it? 
what is he talking about? It's finished. That's it. Forget about it. You know, we're never gonna move, we're never gonna move on. God gives you a daily bread, which means that every single day is a new day. And because it's a new day, forget about what happened yesterday. If you went to bed arguing, right? When you wake up in the morning, hello, good morning. Is everything all right? Can we just carry on with life? Let's move on. When you come back from work, we will sit down and talk. Then a person will be going to work and thinking and thinking and thinking over it. You know, what is he going to be talking about? The problem is the devil wants you to dwell in the past experience. But God wants you to move on. God wants you to move to a new life. A new life. God is not going to give you the grace to do something tremendous tomorrow. But God is going to give you grace to be extraordinary today. That's why my brothers and sisters, today is so important. Give us our daily bread. Today is so important. Today is the day. Today is the day where if you have to extend grace on someone, you extend grace on someone. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't say, oh, I will do it tomorrow. I will do it in a in, in, in few weeks' time. Who knows what tomorrow has in store for you? Who knows what, what, you know, what tomorrow, if you have to do something for God right now, God has given you the grace to do it now. God has given you the grace to do it now. If you've got something to give to God, do it now. There are some of us who've got something in them that say, I'm waiting for a big opportunity. I'm waiting for a better opportunity. What sort of opportunity you want? The opportunity is now. Because tomorrow, you do not know if the opportunity will still be there. And I want to tell you something. God is giving, you, is giving you that grace today to do something tremendous for the battles of the future. If you can't use that grace today, you've already lost the battle for the future. David had to face Goliath. And when Saul looked at him and said, you're just a young man. This man, the Goliath that you see, is a trained soldier. You will notice trained soldier. Uh, you're a soldier. You know what David told him? He said, when I was looking after my father's sheep, a bear came to eat one of them. Oh, I fought him. I destroyed him. I killed it. This man that you see, Goliath, I will do to him exactly what I did to that bear. You know what he did to, uh, to Goliath? He killed him. He did not say, I'm not, I do not have the strength. I'm going to wait tomorrow. When he was looking after his father's sheep, he used the grace that God gave him. But that grace that he used on the day was preparing him for the battle against Goliath. And some of us we will lose the battle against, against Goliath because we never use the, the grace that God is giving you right now. The grace that God is giving you today. You're not using it. You are waiting. You're waiting and waiting for a better opportunity. We need to believe God and we need to do what God is asking us to do. Let me move to my next point. We should be willing to accept the kind of bread that God supplies. When we say that give us our daily bread. You got to accept that bread that God, you know, God is giving you. The point I'm making to you is that we should, we, when we say, give us our daily bread, as soon as God gives you that bread, you say, this bread is too small. And when God gives you bread, you smell it. No, I don't want this one. Give us our daily bread means accepting the kind of bread that God supplies. Some of us will get a big one. Some will get a small one. Some will get a baguette. Some will get a loaf. Some will get sliced bread. It will come in different shapes and forms. But the problem is that when God supplied our bread, we say, Lord, I don't like this one. I don't like sliced one. Can you just bring me a loaf? Or can you bring me a baguette? Lord, I like a French baguette. Not this one. Every one of us has got some preset mind of what they're expecting from God. Every one of us. I need a man. That man has to be this tall. 
like this. Like this. This is what I'm saying, Lord. This is what I'm saying. And this is what I want. And then before you know it, you pray, then God supplied the bread. And that bread comes sliced. Really, really sliced. God has sliced it. You wanted this one. God has sliced here. Then it looks like this. And then as soon as he has, Lord, I did not ask you for this one. No, 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 Lord. I did not ask you for this one. Lord, I asked for daily bread, but that daily bread, I want it to be French baguette. And God says, can you accept the kind of bread I'm giving to you? Can you accept the kind of bread I'm giving to you? My friend, I want to tell you, the problem with us when we pray, give us our daily bread, is that we are not ready to accept the kind of bread God, that, you know, God gives. We're not ready. We're not ready. We don't like it. Lord I, want you, Lord, I want you to show me. As soon as God shows you, no, 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 not this one. Lord, I want in something else. But would you accept the kind of bread that God, God is giving you? You want a job and God is supplying a job for you. You don't want that job because your mind is set on something else. Your mind is set on something else. You need God's grace and God is giving you the grace. But still you cannot look at that grace and consider it as a grace. You say, Lord, this is not enough. This is too small. This is too big. Look at how big. Look at his head. It's too big. Lord, I want a slender head. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. God is giving you the bread. Would you accept it? The problem is we live in a culture where everything that we need, we want. We have read and we have seen it in the social medias. We have seen it in the magazines and all that. Now, even the the, the, the concept of beauty has been redefined by the magazines. You know, what beauty looks like. When you say what beauty looks like, do you know what beauty looks like? Oh, for a man, what beauty looks like? Oh, six. Look at that. 